Hi Mark, a lot of people want to use reward-based training to solve difficult problems and they're able to solve more basic problems but they um, get frustrated uh, when it comes time to solve the more difficult problems and you have some thoughts about that using concepts that you talk about a lot, uh, stress and de-stress. Can you talk about that? Sure. So um, a lot of people really want to use reward-based methods to solve difficult problems and it's a great way to solve problems but they run into a lot of frustration at uh, kind of a boundary layer or a difference between the easiest things they're working with and the more difficult things. So a lot of times they'll be frustrated and say, well, the doctor's really great in situations X, Y, and Z that are very simple, but the whole reason that I really started doing training in the first place was to deal with, let's say, his dog reactivity. And when they get to that point, the training falls apart and they're very frustrated. So there's a concept that can be really helpful with this, and it's the concept of eustress and distress. So pretty much everybody's familiar with what distress is. Um, most dogs, when they're barking or being really reactive to another dog, they're under distress. The opposite of, you, of distress is called eustress. Uh, this is like the idea, most people know what nocturnal is, but very few people know its opposite, which is diurnal. So eustress and distress are both stress. That's why they have the word stress in the name. Um, but they're stress caused by um, opposite emotional states. So I like to say to uh, make this point, people cry at funerals, but they also cry at weddings. So distress is stress that's caused by something that you're unhappy about, you don't like, makes you uncomfortable. Eustress is caused by things that you do like or you're happy or excited about. So um, a really common example of eustress is when an owner comes home and a dog's been de-stressed by them being gone all day and now they have eustress about them being back and they get really wound up and bounce around a lot of times whine screech you know depending on how bad the, the dog is his problem but the point there is is that eustress could also be caused by something like throwing a ball for a dog and not letting the dog go get the ball it's stressed by what it's excited about it wants to go get the ball um, a dog could have eustress over us having some food that the dog wanted and being excited that it's going to get the food. So one of the things that happens when people are trying to use uh, reward-based methods is that um, they tend to have a big leap somewhere from the base training that they're doing where they're teaching the dog, you know, as an example, what a bridge or a marker is or using a clicker. Um, and getting the dog to do simple behaviors versus when they're trying to use those same things to help the dog to be calm about what it's really distressed by. So a really simple way to uh, help the training uh, is to get more levels of difficulty in between the easy thing and the very difficult thing. And this is what we call the grade school model. So the idea that you don't just leap from first grade to fifth grade, you go first grade, second grade, third grade. But a lot of times people can't see uh, levels in between some of the real easy, simple things that they do in the base training and the difficult thing that's really why they're doing the training. So, uh, sometimes a simple concept to help with that is to focus on eustress. How could you create some stress in the dog uh, that is somewhere between the easiest and most difficult situations? And as an example, one common way to try to do that would be to, let's say, have a dog reactive dog and just be further from the other dogs. So that would be one way to have some of the stress without having all the stress. Would you like to stay here with me, do you think? Huh? Can we hang together? Good. Um, and uh, so a lot of times that's hard to do when we're focused on the de-stress. It's hard to have control of how far away that other dog might be or how excited a dog do we run into or whatever. Um, but uh, for most dogs, we can create uh, a lot of levels of eustress by using things that the dog likes to create stress. So, first of all, it's important to think about that the dog theoretically could be stressed anywhere from a level 1 to a level 10, either through distress or eustress. Now, there are lots of dogs that don't have a level 10 stressor on the happy side. 
there are lots of dogs that don't have a level 10. Hey, Leroy, are you stressed by something? Are you <laughs> sick something? Um, uh, a lot of dogs don't have a level 10 de-stressor. They're just happy, easygoing dogs. But theoretically, um, if we taught a dog how to deal with a level 10 stress in eustress, um, the dog would already know how to deal with a level 10 stressor in de-stress. Um, a lot of times it doesn't seem to be exactly true, but it's a basic concept. So, a dog could be stressed over wanting to get to a person that it really likes, uh, wanting to get food that it likes, um, wanting to play with a toy that it likes, something like that. And what we can do is, whatever concepts we're using to help the dog deal with its, uh, let's say, dog reactivity, and in TBT that would be things like name and explain, intermediate bridging, conditioned relaxation. Um, we can use all those techniques with a stress that we've intentionally created, stop it, thank you, um, with a stress that we've intentionally created that's something the dog is happy about. So there's a couple of great things about using eustress instead of just focusing on, focusing on what the dog is de-stressed by. First of all, we often can create the eustress whenever we want. So as an example, if we're dealing with dog reactivity, we, did, we need another dog, and then we don't typically have control for when that dog shows up, how difficult the dog is, etc., etc. Um, but we could easily take a dog and put some food out on the floor in front of it and teach the dog that it can't get to the food until it gets relaxed. And we could control how difficult that was by things like how good was the quality of food that we used, you know, was it kibble or was it some meat or something the dog really, really liked. We could control that some by how near or far the food was. The dog would be less stressed by food that's 10 feet away than food that's maybe 12 inches away. Um, and what this does is gives us a lot of opportunity to work with stress on a lot of small incremental levels. And this gives us the ability to really apply the grade school method and teach the dog in little bits of increase. Now, the same thing that applied in second grade applies in third grade. And what this will allow you to do very often is to actually create, uh, at some point, a very high level of stress over something the dog likes and teach the dog to deal with that very well. So that now when you are faced with the de-stress, the thing that just pops up that you don't necessarily have great control over, um, your dog is much, much further along than he otherwise would have been. And now the reward-based methods uh, will tend to be successful at that level where they weren't before because you were making too big a leap between what the dog was capable of and what he's not capable of. Thank you.